My 600 Pound Life is a show on TLC that is about one of the hardest things someone may need to do. Lose hundreds of pounds in only one year. Most of the patients on the show weigh close to or even above 600 pounds, putting them at risk for irreversible health damage and even a major risk of death. The patients on the show are treated by Dr. Nawazardin, a gastroenterologist located in Houston, Texas, and he is the doctor who treats these patients on TV and is very tough to please. He takes the patient's life into his hands in order to help them recover from obesity and get their lives back on track. But of course, with any reality TV show comes drama, family matters, intense moments of both good and bad. My 600 pound life is no different than any reality TV show. Unfortunately, a lot of the patients end up turning to food to cope with tragic life events. Here are some of the saddest My 600 Pound Life stories, so grab some tissues and get ready. Of course, it's always sad when someone passes away, especially when everyone gets so attached to each patient on the show and for good reason. Robert started on the show weighing in at 840 pounds, literally just shy of 900 pounds. Robert was excited to join the show and started on building on a new life, and he was able to successfully lose 340 pounds. However, after his fat removal surgery to help him out, he ended up getting addicted to pain pills. Soon after, Robert suffered from heart issues and eventually passed away. His fiance was devastated and fans started to blame her for his death since she was an enabler to his weight. It was a whole mess and is also very sad. The New Jersey native struggled with compulsive eating and food addiction weighing 842 pounds at the time of filming. He had lost 200 pounds and was trying to make healthy changes in his life. Hey, Catherine. Yeah. Robert lived with his fiance, Catherine, who said nothing stopped him from eating. He suffered a heart attack while filming. His episode aired this week. Shanae is no stranger to trauma. At only 27 years old, Shanae is too heavy to do everyday tasks. Even fitting into the shower is not an option. Her husband takes care of her in every way. When Shanae was five years old, she was molested by a family member. She was so young, she did not even notice what happened and complained of a pain in her groin. She kept eating to help hide her pain from her childhood and was 160 pounds at 11 years old. Aside from dealing with her childhood trauma, she ended up with an infection in her leg, which made it even harder to lose the weight. At 23 years old, Shanae was raped by a mutual friend. She kept on eating and eating to make herself bigger and she eventually got to 500 pounds and was hoping that no one would want to abuse her anymore. She met her now husband at 25 and suffered miscarriages from her weight. This episode is even harder to watch as Shanae had a hard time on the show and was caught on camera lying to Dr. Now. Poor Shanae, certainly one of the saddest backstories. You haven't lost any weight in four months. Why? I'm telling you, doctor, I got water You weight. should have lost 130 pounds by now. Are you eating this junk and no. you keep lying to me? She didn't eat I'm it. not eating any of that. Then how come you're not losing weight? I haven't ate anything. You keep repeating the same lie. She didn't now do it, telling you the truth. Like, I'm, I wouldn't lie about that. Like, she, really has, she really hasn't working for it. We are pissing you off. We're working she everything. Like, We're giving you every tool to lose weight, and you're telling us all this lie. You know you're not doing what you need. You miss all your psychotherapy appointments, and then you come here pretending there is a serious issue to avoid facing the fact that you gain because you know you are overeating. Another depressing backstory that involved trauma and abuse belongs to Mercedes. Mercedes joined Dr. Now's program weighing in at nearly 800 pounds. Her backstory explained her life of trauma and abuse and sadly how she turned to food as a coping mechanism, as many of the patients suffered through. When she was under the intense care of Dr. Now, she was able to lose the weight successfully and almost qualified for the weight loss surgery. However, after leaving his direct supervision, she started to gain weight again. Dr. Now set her up with a therapist every two weeks to come see her and help her work out her issues. Her therapist has her open up about her childhood and the shocking moment when she admitted to being sexually abused by her father and then being confused about forgiveness to him due to his death. Mercedes cried to the therapist as she struggled to find meaning to her pain. You haven't lost any weight in four months. Why? I'm telling you, doctor, I got water weight. You should away. have lost 130 pounds by now. Are you eating this junk and no. you keep lying to me? She didn't eat. I'm not eating any of that. Then how come you're not losing weight? I haven't ate anything. You keep repeating the same lie. She didn't no. do it, telling you the truth. Like, I'm, I wouldn't lie about that. It like, she, really has, she really hasn't working for it. We are pissing you off. We're working she everything. We're giving you every tool to lose weight, and you're telling us all this lie. You know you're not doing what you need. 
You miss all your psychotherapy appointments. And then you come here pretending there is a serious issue to avoid facing the fact that you gain because you know you are overeating. Imagine putting in all the work to get your life back on track and your partner gives you the opposite of what you need support wise. This is what happened to Lashanta. Lashanta was doing well on Dr. Now's plan, but there was a wrench thrown into her life when her boyfriend JT and she broke up. He ended the relationship because he was unhappy with her losing weight, and was only attracted to her because of her weight. Not only is this rude, but it's confusing and surely really sad to see someone so close to you be unattracted as you try to better yourself. I hate what my life has become. Because I'm living in constant misery now. My weight has gotten so out of control. It's taken almost everything from me. And with all this weight on me, my whole body feel like it's constantly crushed. The pain is unbearable. And because of that, I can't get around. Imagine taking one of the biggest tasks of your life, only to be constantly manipulated and abused by the ones you love the most. Unfortunately, this scenario was not far off from patient Zaylin Whitworth, who started her episode with an emotional introduction about how her husband, Gareth, was unsupportive. Her life was put in danger due to her husband's own fetish. Yes, his own fetish. Garish had a fetish for her to stay overweight and that he would not be attracted to her if she ended up losing the weight. He even continually compared her weight game to having a steak. He actively worked to prevent her from joining the program. His own desire was practically killing her. Luckily, she did lose the weight and divorced her scummy husband. But of course, it was dramatic. He has a physical preference for his sexual needs that requires me to be bigger than, you know, just fat. I realized I've been telling myself a lie and that lie was killing me. Big can't be beautiful when it means my daughter may not have a mother. James started off his episode by saying how he turns to food to help with his stress, even going to get fast food up to six days a week. James came from a really sad background of multiple deaths in his family. James was hesitant to see Dr. Now as he was worried the doctor would tell him there was nothing else that could be done for his weight. Like many of the patients, he turned to food to cope with the negative feelings and used it as a way to feel better when extremely sad. And I'm gonna try to feed him less, but it's hard. Come on. He usually eats till he's full. 